Great, so welcome again. Uh, here I have David, Zero Dot, and Josh with me from the Lens Protocol team. I'll let you guys take the stage. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat and we can take them as we go or towards the end. Thanks. Awesome. Well, GM everyone, and I uh, hope everyone had a great weekend and is having a happy Monday. Uh, I'm David, I'm, I'm the product manager for social products here at Aave, including Lens Protocol. And I'm joined today by uh, Josh, one of our lead backend developers, author of the Lens API, and Zero Dot, um, one of our lead smart contract developers, uh, the lead developer behind the Lens contracts. Um, we're gonna do a, a quick session today, kind of recapping, I think a, a previous presentation we gave on, on how Lens works and what it does. Um, Peter will then jump in and, and give us a little bit on the lens contracts in particular and how to build with them, specifically looking at modules. And then Josh will jump in and talk a little bit about building on lens using the lens API from Ape companies. Um, so if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat. We're gonna do our best to answer them live. Um, if not, we'll do them at the end of each respective session or section. Um, with that, let's jump into it. Um, so uh, we'll do a quick overview of lens. Um, you know. I think it goes without saying web two social media is pretty broken. Um, you know, not a day goes by that we're not uh, constantly railing at Meta and Twitter and all of these names that I legally probably shouldn't be saying, but we're gonna say anyway. You know, networks are selling your data as part of the deal where you get free access to Facebook. In return, they're gonna monetize your content, turn you into ad sales. Um, the user data is not portable. I really wish that I could post a singular video to both TikTok and YouTube and Vimeo at the same time, but good UX is definitely the antithesis of web two. Uh, and user data is centralized. I, I love when Facebook gets hacked and all of a sudden my email is full of spam, my mailbox is full of spam, and my identity is probably being sold somewhere on the internet. Um, so we're set out to build Lens Protocol to change all of this uh, and bring power back. You know, we say in Web two that uh, you know in Web two, you know, the game theory of social uh, is zero sum. Everyone needs to compete against each other absolutely because you only get data when they're on your app. That's it. Uh, with Web three, we're changing it to make it collaborative sum. Uh, we're doing that by building an open, composable, and decentralized social graph. Lens is not a social media network. It is a social graph that allows you to build social apps or social experiences. Um, as a creator, you own the links between you and your community. You own your content, um, all using NFT technology. You form this fully composable, decentralized social graph. Um, you know, continuing to kind of go through this overview, we have kind of three key NFTs that undermine, uh, underpin the entire system. The first being a profile NFT. Uh, if you've ever worked with ENS or Unstoppable, this is gonna look very similar, right? It's just a, an NFT representing a handle. Uh, I'm at David um, and uh, it looks the same. It's got a little bit of metadata um, where you can say it's my bio, it's my profile picture um, that will resolve when I go look at this in OpenSea. Um, but, but the key thing we have there is we have, we have two kind of additional things. We have this uh, publications array and a pend only array where you can add publications. These are posts, mirrors, which are what we call um, you know, retweets or, or comments, which are uh, a reference to another publication plus additional content. Um, you know, Publications refer to all of these posts, single post, share or, or a mirror. Um, that's just a simple reference to another publication, comment, reference with additional content. Um, and that's your publications array. Additionally, you have this thing called a follow module, which includes your follow logic to issue follow NFTs, the next key NFT. The follow NFT um, is the result of the follow process. My wallet, wallets follow profiles, davidev.eth wants to follow at Josh. I will go ahead, I'm gonna call a transaction to try to follow him. It's gonna hit his follow module, set on a per profile basis, and some arbitrary logic will get run before deciding whether or not to issue me a follow NFT. For example, it could be, you have to pay me five ETH at one time in order to follow me. Um, is it possible for a profile to have different follow modules, follow modules at the same time, or just one? Just one, but again, arbitrary uh, logic can be included. So you could do some kind of like compound follow module that implemented two different logics. It could be, you have to have a certain uh, NFT in your collection, you know, representing like a creator pass, or you have to pay me five Matic to follow. Um, so you could do that kind of compound logic inside a singular module, but only one module can be active on a profile at a given time. Um, this module at follow NFT also has a, a token ID and that's based on the order of following. So the first follower of at Josh will have ID one, so on and so on. 
Uh, it also has some built-in governance, including, you know, including delegation. And so this allows the creation of what we call like social DAOs. Um, think of social tokens, remove the RC20, uh, and we could do a lot more powerful things with them. Uh, so I could use Snapshot to say, I want to go, uh, you know, I, I want to pull my audience to say, uh, you know, I want to pull my audience. Should Josh, who does a lot of great tutorials, should he keep making Solidity tutorials uh, focusing on IBV3, V3, or should he do uh, Alchemix V2? And you can say, actually, I only want my first 500 followers to be able to vote on this. So you can do all kinds of different things. Um, that's the follow NFT. So let's go back to the profile uh, profile NFT. And we said it contains this publications array. Well, let's kind of look into a publication a little bit. A, a publication um, is pretty much just a, a blob of metadata, right? Lens uh, protocol does not care about where you're actually storing um, just publication, right? You're going to reference a content URI. And that can reference AR Weave. IPFS, ceramic. Uh, it can also reference um, a centralized address, like something stored on S3 or, or any arbitrary URL. You could also try to address and say this lives somewhere in Ethereum state or Polygon state. It's going to be some on-chain reference. Um, so, just, you know, we don't care where storage is going to be. Um, so that's part of it. In addition, you can set uh, two additional modules, a reference module and another thing called a collect module. We're going to start with collect modules. So collect um, is the process by which a publication can get minted into a standalone NFT uh, whose content will be the same as a uh, the same as the original publication. So uh, the collect module describes this logic. Um, it is the mint function. Um, again, arbitrary logic that results in a Boolean answer, true or false. If true, a collect NFT gets issued. So a sample could be, I just took a great recent trip to London uh, and me and Josh took a great photo together and I may want to publish that um, on my publications. And I may say, hey, they're going to be 50 copies of NFT that could be minted um, and they're going to start at one Matic each. I can make it even more complex. And I can say, uh, you know, start at one Matic and then every time it gets minted at an additional Matic. Um, we've had the community build really complex ones that say, take the Matic that's generated by these sales, deposit it into Aave and send the A tokens back to the creator. Um, in addition, all of these collect modules have additional logic that allows a referral fee. So uh, if I do a publication on my feed um, and then Josh mirrors it, again, putting a publication to his feed via the mirror type, um, and then somebody collects based off of Josh's, Josh's mirror, I as the creator can set a certain percentage of the fee to go to Josh, the curator. And so we now have curation incentives, um, et cetera. Last thing we have is this reference module. So when I said mirror and I said comments, how they contain a reference to another piece of content, comments obviously have additional original content, that is decided by a reference module. So I can set, I can set this kind of right, um, you know, right protection on it. Uh, think of this in Twitter when you make a publication or a post and you say only my friends can comment or retweet. This is the exact same logic. Uh, if I want to comment on side of on Josh's uh, a particular post of Josh. Um, Right before that comment goes through, it's going to have to pass through his reference module, which again, arbitrary logic coming down to a Boolean answer. So it can say things like, you can only comment on this post uh, if you are a follower of mine or you pay me five Matic. You can only come on to come on, comment on this post if you hold a board ape or pay one ETH or hold, I don't know, an Avagachi. You could do any kind of arbitrary logic. Um, it could be community-based. You can only comment or share this post if you have at least 32 FWB. So, you know, to kind of recap on the extensibility side, there are three key areas to look at. We have three modules, a follow module, which decides arbitrary logic, giving a Boolean answer, saying whether or not you mint a follow NFT. The example I give here is you can only follow me if you hold a board ape or pay me five ETH. Reference module, whether or not you're able to comment or mirror, which is our version of retweet, on a given piece of content set on a per publication basis. The example here is you can't comment or retweet this if you don't have 32 FWB. And lastly, collect module, arbitrary logic deciding whether or not an NFT, a collect NFT gets minted from a publication. So in this case, it could be, you have to pay me five ETH in order to get this NFT. And it can be very complex, as much as complex as you want. Uh, I'm gonna run through some of the questions in the chat before handing this off to Peter to take us a kind of a walk through the contracts and a little bit of uh, publications. Um, you know, can, can DAO's own profiles, does the profile have to be 
a wallet address? No, in fact, that's something that we're seeing a lot of cool development on is what happens when profile and follow NFTs are held by smart contracts. You could do something where a smart contract holds a profile NFT, you have an admin that can add posters and different people can post on behalf of a DAO, let's say. Um, or, you know, we could have accounts that have parental controls done that way. Um, private postings, can you do kind of encryption mechanisms? There's a ton of great sponsors of this hackathon, such as Lit Protocol, that allow you to do kind of encryption using Ceramic as a storage solution. So, right, my content URI inside a publication can reference a piece of encrypted content uh, between Lit Protocol and Ceramic, and then an individual trying to read um, a specific publication will have to have the ability to get the decryption key through that external protocol. Lens just defines how things are defined on chain. The feed is represented. Well, the feed is a, is, is a bit more, um, right? Currently you just have an append only list of publications on a per profile basis. A feed is a more generalized, higher level, um, you know, structure. And uh, Josh can touch on that when he does uh, the API. Um, let's see. Can somebody create a profile without setting up the full protocol? You can on testnet uh, using the API or using the mock create profile proxy contract. I believe that's what it's called. Josh has me in the comments there. Um, you know, so with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Peter. I think Peter uh, should have shareability. Peter, if you wanna uh, jump in. Hey. Yeah, yeah, so I'm on Windows, so I don't have my, my code here, but I do have uh, GitHub. And I'm gonna walk you guys through a little bit how uh, that kind of thing works. So let me quickly share uh, this. I just made you a co-host, Peter. Okay, can you guys see the GitHub? Yeah, we can. Okay, cool. So basically, uh, I'm gonna take a quick rundown. I'm not gonna go deep into the contracts because I know we don't have infinite time, but basically, the main entry point, if you're building on the Lens protocol, you're going to want to get familiar with the Lens Hub, OK? Now, we use a proxy pattern, but you don't need to care about that. This is the interface that you need to abide by if you're going to um, build on the contract layer. And this is also where all the different events and, and the different um, functions that you need to care about are located, basically. Now, uh, the main functionality, obviously, is down here. When you see profile owner functionality functions here, you've got create profile. This is how you create your profile. Etc. There's a few additional features that are not included in the documentation yet, like setting a default profile, etc. But uh, you don't need to worry too much about this kind of stuff because you're on limited time. Just make sure that you're at least familiar with how NFTs work, the ERC721 standard, etc. And uh, yeah, so like David mentioned, we have three different kinds of modules. We have follow modules, collect modules, and reference modules, right? Oh, you want a link to the GitHub? Sure. Let me send a link to the GitHub. Yeah, it's all public and all that. Oh, thanks, David. Anyway, so I want to dig a little bit into how modules work. So we know that the Lens Hub is the entry point. It's where you create your publications. It's where you do basically everything that you want to do. Now, if you go to the core directory and you click on modules, you'll see a whole bunch of modules that we've already created here. Now, you can ignore these-ish. These are the base modules, which we use in inheritance to simplify the code. Feel free to inherit from them as well if they include functionality you need. Let's start with collect modules because I think this is the most interesting one for hackathon builders. This is actually the, this is where the logic is when you create a publication and somebody's trying to collect it, right? So for example, if I'm an artist and I wanna create um, a new work of art, and I want people to be able to buy it and receive it as an NFT, including digital rights, et cetera, maybe I can include, I, I can use the fee collect module here. And this will basically allow me to charge a fee of an amount that I've decided for anybody to collect my, my publication. I can also choose to limit it to only my followers. Originally, this was always the, the um, well, right now it's not pushed on this branch, but we're changing it so that you're, allow, you're allowed to, uh, to allow non-followers to collect as well, but currently it's only followers. So yeah, basically you're able to charge a fee on a given currency as long as it's whitelisted, et cetera. The DAO does get a treasury fee if it's enabled. Right now it's not enabled, but the functionality is there. And we also have um, the process collect with, uh, with referral function, which allows mirrors to be, um, to be used as basically a content curation platform. 
And just to give a quick recap of how that would work, there are three different kinds of publications. We have posts, which are your standard content. We have comments, which are standard content that points to another piece of content, like a comment, right, typically. And we have mirrors, which are our equivalent of shares, which are basically just pointers to another piece of content and are, which are typically used to expand the reach of another content, like a retweet, right, on Twitter. So the thing is, if you collect a mirror, for example, if David shared my, my work of art from previously and somebody tries to collect that, it would be unfair if David didn't get any credit because he's the one that, that got me, you know, that, that got you to see my, my work of art. So modules allow a referral function, which basically implies that David can get a cut of the fees, right? Now, me as the creator, I'm able to set these different parameters so I can say, yeah, David gets a small fee or a large fee or, you know, whatever I want, but only when I create that publication. So you can imagine there's a lot of interesting things that could happen here. One thing that I'd really like to see is a collect module that is like connected to a DAO in some way, right? A profile owned DAO that allows certain criteria for, for example, governance participants only to collect or people that have contributed in some civil resistant way to the advancement of the protocol, for example. You can include any logic you want. You can, like David mentioned, you can make it so only holders of a specific NFT, only these addresses, you can even make it so, so the fee is different for different people. It doesn't matter. Anything that you want to do, let your, let your creativity flow. So you can always take a look at these modules and get inspired and see all, all the things that we've got. And uh, yeah, so these are the basic collect modules that we've got built here. There's a lot of pull requests. There's a lot of new ones that we had a bunch of bounties for. And I think we might still have some bounties. So feel free to take a look at that after the hackathon. Um, next up, we've got follow modules, which like we like we mentioned earlier right are there to include arbitrary logic the moment uh somebody tries to follow you so for example i can charge a fee on follow it's very simple or i may have to approve you to follow for example this means that uh, this is actually quite interesting because if you think outside the box you can imagine again a dao owning the profile and the only time that it actually approves a follow is when you satisfy a certain condition and then and that would execute a contract call that approves your your address as a follower, right? So then, so then we create quite an interesting exclusive uh, DAO, right? And the most interesting thing about this is that the follower NFTs themselves actually have built-in governance functionality, including snapshotting. So you can create votes, and with very little effort, you can you can basically have a self-sustaining community, right? Or at least the infrastructure to maintain a well to have a self-sustaining community, which I think is. Pretty fucking cool. So anyway, um, <laughs> now you've got also the, the base modules like we mentioned earlier. There's some that are unique to follow, for example, some that are unique to collect, I think. And yeah, I just want to show you guys a little bit what a, a base module looks like and, and why we, we do this kind of inheritance pattern. Because I know that when I started Solidity and when I started Smart Contracts, inheritance was kind of confusing to me and I was trying to figure out why we did it this way. Basically, Anything that inherits from module base, you'll see that you actually have a any time-based or location-based logic possible. Maybe with an oracle, sure. If the if you have a, a trusted oracle that can provide that, sure. You could probably have something that only allows you to collect if it's not rainy in Seattle. Anyway, so yeah, basically anything that inherits that inherits from module base will be able to use this modifier only hub, which everything is open source, guys. Inherit from it. Have fun. And this would basically allow only the, the uh, Lens Hub to call this contract, for example, which is important because you don't want your, your modules to be called by anyone or else you could have, a, you could have a, uh, a vulnerability. So you can see that we use that modifier all over. Only Hub, Only Hub, you know, and uh, yeah. So let's look at a couple of questions before I look at the last kind of module. I know I'm kind of rambling all over the place, but let's see where we're at. So I was interested in creating a friends mechanism or like two-way follow reward. Would I need to create a new module? I'm not sure what you mean. Are you saying that if I follow you, it automatically follows me back or something like that? If you can specify what you mean by your question, then I'll, I'll give it an answer. Does this allow us to extend the social graph? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can extend it however you want, right? Like a follow doesn't have to be just one, one thing. It can be anything that you want it to be. Right. That's the beauty of the modules. 
if we're both following each other, we get reward. Yeah, sure. Why not? It's very, it's very possible to do that. You can check uh, if a user is following another user as simply as checking the bounds of their follow uh, NFTs, right? If it's greater than zero, then for sure they're following the uh, appropriate profile. All this stuff is exposed from the view functions that we've got in the lens hub. So if you scroll all the way down, you'll be able to see the view function section here. And I, there's a lot of it, so it's a bit bloated, but basically, uh, basically we're at, um, we're at over here, you can see that there's a lot of different ways to access specific information or general information. So I think it's quite, it's quite uh, practical. If you guys are interested, this is a good way, a good place to start. Okay. Lastly, like we mentioned before, we've got reference modules, which are the newest kind of module that we came up with. And so there aren't that many of them, but basically reference modules allow for uh, specific logic to be executed when somebody tries to comment or mirror one of your publications. So uh, this could mean that I, like, like for example, if you're familiar with Twitter that prevents you from, that you can set it so only your followers can comment, for example, this is something that we can do here as well. So, and there's a lot of interesting things here as well. I want you guys to go crazy, make some interesting logic. And yeah, multi-sig like control for sure. You're working on a new reference module. That's awesome. We're building an application on Lens that requires the minting of profiles. Who's the right person to contact on the Discord? So if you're talking about the test net, we have actually deployed a profile creation proxy. So profile creation has to be whitelisted to prevent spam, obviously. But on test net, we allow anybody to create a profile via the profile creation proxy. And that's that's totally open source and verified even on Polygon Scan if you want. Mumbai.polygonscan.com. So, yeah, that's um, that's it for the modules. If you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, ping me on Discord. I'm zero dot capital Z E R zero D O T, and you'll see me on the ETH Global Discord. Or you can ask your questions here. And uh, while Josh is giving his part of the presentation, I'll definitely stick around in the chat and answer anything you got. That's it for me. Awesome. Thank you, Peter, so much. Um, you know, tons of different things you can build on module wise. And as a reminder, we do have uh, certain rewards in the hackathon explicitly for uh, the top uh, top of each collect reference and uh, follow modules. We have two for collect right now. So uh, if you want to go down that route, it's a great way to go. Uh, just a reminder that do two modules need to be whitelisted. If you create one, you have to that local environment. Um, uh, it will not be able to be integrated into the test net. Um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Josh to talk about the Lens API. Um, so, you know, TLDR, we built an API to allow uh, non slidy devs to be able to really easily interact and build front ends on top of Lens. Uh, with that, Josh, uh, you want to take it away from here? Hey guys, I uh, got a bit of a cough because I'm uh, actually got COVID, but um, I'm all good. So yes, I will start with the docs. So we created an API because a lot of the data is um, emitted in events and we wanted a way that you could grab this data really quick and really easily. Let me make sure I keep the Zoom chat open. I don't know where I can see questions for that anymore. Um, so I can't see questions, so just, yeah. Um, so on the API docs, you'll see that you've got the, the API, it's got no API keys at the moment, it's just beta. So some things are broken, some things um, may not work perfectly. So if they um, are not, please raise it in, in Discord. I'm always in Discord to, fit, to fix any issues. Um, the main thing is that we're trying to make this like a Web2 API. So with modules, with everything like that, it's super complicated with how you have to init them, how you have to like um, construct the data to redeem them and all that kind of stuff. So the API is here to kind of help you do that. Um, it's got authentication uh, and to kind of log in, you just create a challenge, you then sign the challenge and then you get an access code back and then you can use it on some of the authenticated endpoints. Um, the main thing here is like publications, for example. So we have our metadata standards, which we ask everyone to conform to. Uh, the server won't index it if it doesn't conform to this standard. So there's stuff in there like content. Content is like your post, like hello world. Um, you have media. Media is like your attachments. You have the image, which is the NFT itself. Um, so it can display on OpenSea. Um, so this is the kind of met, this is the metadata that you conform to. 
Um, to create a publication, you can go through the normal contract calls, which are like create publication or, or, or I forgot what it's com completely called, or you can use the type data approach. Now, the type data approach kind of abstracts all the complex stuff away from you. So like if you're setting up a publication, all you need to do is pass in the profile ID, the content, and then kind of define what collect module that you want. So like here, it, it's as easy to turn on a, a reference module as a boot um, with, um, with a Boolean. Uh, and then when it returns back, um, like you, when it returns back, it will be all in your type data for you. So if you look down here, we have a full working example where you create the post request. For example, I'm saying this publication is a time fee collect, this currency, this amount, this will be pre-formatted for you on the server. Um, and then you have who it goes to and your referral fee. Again, human readable numbers. So it's not, you know, you're not having to time to buy um, the power of 18 or X, Y, and Z. Um, and then you'll get a, um, a sign type and then you can sign it and then you can send it like this. Um, you know, so it's super easy to kind of create publications and stuff like that. Um, all the other stuff like getting publications and stuff like that, again, it's just as easy. Um, to grab pu publications, you kind of have an endpoint which is called publications. You say, hey, I wanna grab all the publications for number one profile ID of type, post, comment, and mirror. Um, and then you'll get a response back of all the publications. All the metadata itself um, is already de um, extracted for you. So you don't have to read any HTTP requests. You don't need to read anything like that. Uh, and the modules, the collect modules is all decoded or like all ready for you to kind of know what needs to be supplied to it and stuff like that. We have like count, like tables, like how many times it's been collected, how many times it's been mirrored. We always include the full profile entity itself, which includes like your follow modules, how many followers they've got, who owns it, the picture, the handle, kind of bringing all this information because with GraphQL, it, 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 it's really nice how it's schema based. So you can really bring like a lot of context on all of these queries. Uh, so, you know, the documentation fully shows all of this stuff. You've got interesting calls, like for example, timeline. So timeline allows you to say, hey, um, bring me back um, all my social graphs, posts, comments, mirrors, collected by posts, collected comments. So you can build up like a timeline of stuff, um, which is really cool. Cause like you can, you know, they can log in, they can follow a few people. And now I see if I'm following David now, now every time David does a publication or does a comment or anything like that, I can go and get to it. Um, we have stuff like revenue. So I think Pete, Peter said before where you can set a referral fee for stuff. So like here, you can work out how much has my profile actually made. Um, we have like follow, like everything on the protocol that exists lives in this API. So you can literally get all, every single person that is following you with a simple request like this and then you get all the information back um so yeah like the api is super super useful uh we have full coding examples here um i need to probably ping the repo i don't know if i've got the repo repo's already in the chat josh you could okay cool 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 um uh so this kind of here you can kind of run all the scripts all the scripts are already there for you so like if you wanted to create a profile, you would just do profile, create profile, and it will create you a profile. If you want to follow someone, you can just run follow. It will call the database for you. It will do the type data, it will sign it, and then it will send the transaction for you here. Um, you know, so it's super easy to understand how it all ties together. So yeah, definitely, definitely check it out. It's, su it's super cool to be able to build and bootstrap your API and um, your clients really, really easily. So I've not looked at the chat at all. So let's have a look if there's any questions. So answer a couple of questions. There's some people asking, should they deploy Lens to Mumbai or use the existing deployment? You know, if yeah. you are not building or adding any additional contracts um, or you're not adding in new modules, uh, you know, I, I would say use the deployment. Um, it gives you access to the API and, 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 other, and other situation and other things. Um, but if you're building additional contracts on top of it, um, or new modules, I would say you may want to whether work locally or you can deploy yourself to, to, to Mumbai if you want a, mm -hmm. a more public environment. Yeah. And um, to the question of like cover pictures and stuff like that, there's a few things like if you look at like update profile, right? 
there's a few things that are um, off chain. So for example, these fields are off chain, name, bio, location, website, Twitter URL, cover picture. Um, yeah, so they live only on the server. Um, so that's how you can update those kind of stuff just for a server to server call. But like 99% of the data is all on chain. Um, there's examples here of like how you create a post as well. So like if you wanted to create a post, um, you can map it all out. You see it's really super easy to create a post. And then we've got up IPFS up here to upload you some content and it will send it for you and you've got a publication. So um, super, super easy to kind of get, get up and running with all of this stuff. Um, is there any other questions about the API, anything like that? I think all the docs have been shared. And as we say, hit Discord. We're always on there to help where we can and help debug issues and stuff like that. Seen some really cool projects already being built with the API and how, how quick they can bootstrap and build is, is, is amazing to see. So, yeah, super exciting. Awesome. Thank you, Josh. Uh, um, one other quick question. Is there any way I can query a random date without need of a profile ID? Um, profile ID isn't mandatory. So like, for example, on uh, we have like on, like on publications, for example, we have, oh, let me get rid of that. Um, we have stuff like, um, I think it's random. I forgot where it is. But like, like for example, on, on profile, we have this, ran, um, this random profile that will bring you random pictures. The, re the request, you, you don't need any, any input for the request. And same for explore, we have an explore here. Um, again, you have a sort criterion and limit and that explore is saying, hey, bring me back the most popular people on the protocol at the moment, the, post, the most popular publication with the top commented um, and, and stuff like that. And that top commented could be top commented or I forgot what the other criteria is. Um, it's like top collected, I think. Um, so you can grab data like that to kind of bootstrap someone's social graph. Awesome, thank you, Josh. Um, so real quick, uh, I know there's a couple questions at the end, but um, you know, we, we do have a couple of different bounty tracks. Definitely want to highlight again. We have the front ends, obviously, uh, for the top several front ends. We have, we have some big <coughs> bounties for, as well as the best in various categories. Um, on the protocol side, the focus is modules. So, you know, collect, reference, and follow. Best modules in each of those categories uh, are going to get prizing there. And then tooling. We're looking for people to build tooling, such as explorers, right? Looking for a lens scan. would be a really cool build. And, and we're also, I think, have a, have a, have a bounty out for the, the best vampire attack. Uh, on web two. Um, last thing, I think this is kind of kind of most importantly, I know Stani during the summit said this, you know, when they were building Ave, they learned that you're not just building for yourselves, you're building for a community. And uh, I think that's something we've learned. We're building alongside an ecosystem. Uh, and so please, if there's things you would like to see in the contracts, either build themselves or please jump in the discord and let us know what we can do better. Same for the API, right? We have that repo open. We want to make sure that we're building things as best as possible. Um, so that's, that, that's really what we're hoping to build alongside everyone. We're, we're here for your feedback. Uh, we're here for comments and we want to be building alongside a, a whole community. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, yeah. Great. Thanks, David, Josh, and Peter um, for the great session. And feel free to follow up with more questions on the Discord. We'll see you then and have a good day. Thanks, everybody. Take care.